What's up everyone, Super Tom here and today we are back with another BOWS discussion video and to be exact, we'll be looking into whether you having BOW being a main DPS is worth it and if you are, then what is her main DPS build? Now, some of you have been asking me why I haven't posted a video on BOW past couple of days is because I'm sure many of you have already known she has been given some huge buff which I will be going through with you guys in this video as well. Wow. And disclaimers as always guys, this video is purely for discussing pre-release information on Bao. So as you've known, her skills and stats could be changed at any point before she released. As always, everything is subjected to change by miHoYo. So with that out of the way, let us jump into the video. Okay, so as I've mentioned before, Bao's been given some huge buff this past few days. And believe it or not, those buffs are really, really significant that has made her even more insane than how she was was originally. So I want to quickly go over it with you guys here because it does affect her build. First buff, and this is actually a dramatic change in her ascension, is that it now gives her energy recharge in opposed to electro damage. This is actually very good because as you can now balance out between electro damage and her attack stats. While in the past that it seems she's just having a bit too much electro damage because remember that her passive talent 2 also gives her electro damage based on her energy recharge. And now since she's having more energy recharge while leveling up, you don't have to worry too much about investing too much ER in other places. So it's a very good buff that we are seeing. Next, she's given a lot of buff for her burst. Best of which is that her sword attack damage is now confirmed to be calculated as burst damage. I don't even have to tell you how good this actually is because now the bonus you get from 4 piece emblem fate is applied to this as well. Next is her initial slash damage also has been buffed. In the past, talent level 10 was only 706%. Now it's up to 721%. Also, her burst cooldown now went down to 18 seconds. So with a 7 second sort up time, we're technically looking at 11 second cooldown in her burst. However, her energy cost now goes up to 90, which might also benefit her if this is counted in the resolve stacks bonus. There's no confirmation on this yet, but hopefully it does get counted. There's also some changes to the damage bonus you get from resolve stacks. However, it's currently not completely translated yet, so I won't be going over this for now. So we've got a quick look into some of her buff. Now, let's see how viable it is for her to be a main DPS. And I've actually tried looking into some realistic reason as to how good she will be as a main DPS. But uh, honestly speaking, there's not too much reason as of date. First being her base attack is third highest in the game as of now so that is quite viable secondly but not too much important is her defense stats is also the second highest in the game so she's going to be quite tanky when you are having her on the field thirdly the buff for her energy recharge during her ascension can support her on field because she can gain more energy even if you're not switching to any other character finally lower burst cooldown to 18 seconds and you've technically got an 11 second burst cooldown so it's a lot less waiting time for her burst to be back on if you're having her on field most of the time. And apart from these reasons in terms of her stats, her kit really is built around her being a burst DPS guys, especially when miHoYo is having her normal attack damage way too low, lower than Xiang Ling as I've covered in previous videos of mine. Now the only way that I'm seeing she being a DPS that is realistically viable but it's actually locked behind your luck or paywall and that is getting her grass cutter, her main weapon. And this is the only realistic way that I'm seeing her being on field main DPS right now because you get attack buff based on her energy recharge which is what you'll be mostly building her around. So she can boost her burst damage and this also provides you more attack during her normal attack combo. With that being said, what I normally say is that don't let the stats discourage you from what you really want. If you really want to have her being a main DPS, hey, you do you, right? And I support you on that because at the end of the day, it's a game and you play it however you like. Plus, most of the Genshin content is easy enough for you to beat anyway apart from the Abyss. It's going to be quite tough if you're going in with a main bow DPS in the Abyss right now. 
Okay, with Bao main DPS discussion out of the way, let us have a look into how you'd want to build her if she's a main DPS and I'll go over every possible build with you guys. First, we have her artifact builds. Now keep in mind that main DPS means that she's on the field most of the time. Therefore, artifacts build, you'd want to prioritize her attack and crit ratio over energy recharge to support her damage during burst cooldown as well. So for that, flowers and feathers are always HP and attack respectively. So Circlet should be crit damage or crit rate. Now for sands and goblet, there are actually two ways you can go about this. Number one is either having attack sands and electro goblets and number two energy recharge sands and attack percentage goblet. This will depend more on your artifact situation really. The reason why there's energy recharge sands and attack goblet option is because she has electro damage bonus based off of her energy recharge. So in a sense it's already covered a bit of electro damage on the goblet. Therefore, you can invest in attack percentage goblet if you want to. So just go with whichever way that has better substat for you. Now for possible set you can run for main DPS. Choice number one, if you're going towards more electro damage then there is two piece glad and two piece thundering fury. This set will increase her attack by 18% as well as her electro damage bonus by 15%. With this set, let's say you're going with an electro damage goblet as well that would give you a total of 61.5 percent electro damage and remember that her energy recharge level also give her electro bonus so this is going to be a great set for dps bow if you're going with electro damage more choice number two is four piece thunder soother set now the four piece will give you 35 percent attack bonus on electro affected opponent this is a good set on bow alone because her e skill basically has 100 percent uptime and it gives your opponent electro status every time it activates so this really benefits bow choice number three believe it or not not you just go with a four piece emblem bait this is as always will have her normal attack on the lower end damage however the damage that is dealt from her burst will most likely cover the lower number from your normal attack choice number four is four piece glad or four piece reminiscence the four piece glad will give you 35 percent increase to her normal attack so this will work on both your normal attack and her sword animation during her burst or if you want four piece reminiscent it will increase your normal charge and plunge damage by 50% however it does cost you 15 energy every time you activate and her burst is already costing you quite a lot of energy so think hard on this. So those are a number of choices for you. From the looks of this old choice will actually give you almost the same level of boost. So what's most important is you going with a set that gives you the best substats in terms of crit ratio because as always good crit ratio is actually the most important on bow since she's almost doesn't get access to it across her build. Okay moving on to her weapon as a main dps for her five star options as i've mentioned grass cutter is her best option hands down next in line is actually staff of omar this will gives her the most damage boost from its insane bonus when your hp is lower than half as well as 66 percent crit damage bonus way too good not to use on her main dps kit and then we have the primordial jade as it also has crit rate and high base and very good passive on attack bonus so work well on main dps well next is Vor Vortex and then Skyward Spine is last because the attack bonus you get from this poem isn't that good plus it's energy recharge which isn't our main focus for DPS build. And then moving forward to a 4 star option we have first the 2 Blacklift Pole and Death Match. They are pretty much on the same level so choose whichever crit stats your bow is lacking in. Next we have the Royal Spear which is actually really good as it gives you crit rate in passive and it gets even better if you have refinement. It has a base attack attack of 44 which is highest among the 4 star weapons as well as attack bonus in second stats. Now the reason why I rank this lower than black cliff and death match is because the crit rate is not consistent. Many of the times you might just be doing 1 crit damage on your hit which isn't too great from what I'm seeing. And then finally we have the pro type star glitter. This has energy recharge as substats with 42 base attack. It's great for DPS bow as after using her E skills your normal and charge attack will be increased by 8% for 12 seconds so the more refinement you get the better your dps level and for that i should have covered most of the options you can go with main dps bow if you have any discussion or recommendation feel free to drop down in the comment section and i will catch you there also if you're interested in finding out about her burst dps build be sure to check out this video where i go in depth on that or if you're pulling for bow and want to know how much primos you can save before she arrives then you can check out my primo gems estimation video 
If you enjoy my content on Raiden Shogun, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I'll be posting many videos on her including all of her team comp in the next video. With that, this is Tom wishing everyone a super day.